Hey, thanks so much for checking out our bonus episodes of Roll For It, Total Recall! I'm Jake. I just wanted to pop in and say thank you to our patrons who made this possible, our former patrons. We don't have Patreon anymore, but it was because of them that we were able to make this bonus series. And it was for them that we originally released it. Now we've released it to everybody, so I hope you enjoy what we've made. And if you're new, check us out on Twitch. As soon as we get to 100 follows, Season 4 of Roll For It is coming, and it's going to be live. Live on Twitch, so check us out there. The whole cast is back for the for the fun that's at two nerds one pup dot twitch dot whatever all of our new social media presence is at two nerds one pup we are expanding from just D to D and i don't know everything nerdy anyways i'll shut up now please enjoy our episodes of total recall and whatever comes next <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to Roll For It. Hey! This is a bonus series featuring the cast of season two. Bonus! The best season ever. Who's here with me today? Could you guys introduce yourselves and a little bit about your characters? My name is Kendall and I'm Zula, who's the best player here. She's the strongest, (laughs) probably the prettiest. (laughs) (laughs) She's kind of dumb, but like that just makes her a little prettier, right? Yeah. Interesting. That's attractive. <laughs> I'm Colleen and I play Graham Graham. She's the most deadest and alivest in this group. She's a total cleric who is just doing her thing. And I'm Andrew. I play Eric, who's a Gisterai monk and ready to whoop some ass with my crazy ninja ish skills and whatnot. Let's do this. It's been a while, man. So I'm shaking off the cobwebs right here. I'm Jake. I'm the Dungeon Master. I'm excited to be here with this cast who are uh, very okay D&D players, so I'm looking forward to to this adventure. The most okay. So kind. He is so kind. <laughs> I have this really funny idea for the name of this adventure, and I don't even want to like tell it to you guys yet. I already found out. It's on Instagram. Is it? Is it? Kelsey, did you put our idea on Instagram? <laughs> All right, here it is. Ready? <laughs> Tortle Recall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What? I never heard of that. Wow. Whoa, <laughs> what a surprise. Before we begin, I guess I'm going to do like a 10 second recap of season two. I think if you guys want to know what's going on, you should watch season two because these characters are great and there's a lot more about how they got here in that season, but it still stands alone as its own adventure. So here are the basic basics. Again, spoiler alert, go watch it. Aerok, Gram Gram, and Zula were randomly paired together to be guardians, which is the protectors of Urid City, the biggest city in the world. On their first day, every other guardian vanishes and these three are blamed for it because they're the only ones left. All this crazy stuff happens. These three end up saving the day. They rescue all the other guardians from limbo. They were stuck under this magic lake and they were frozen in time. But in the process, Gram Gram passed on. Uh, She died and at the same time was sort of reincarnated in this little baby version of Gram Gram. That brings us to today for the most part, right? That was definitely not 10 seconds. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that was pretty much season two right there. Yeah, Yeah, so you might as well not listen to season two. Yeah, don't even listen to it. (laughs) You don't need to. You got all of the basics. (laughs) We're actually going to start with Zula and Arak, who have been adventuring together, just taking care of the people of the land, along with baby Gram Gram, who's come along for the ride, and Oric, the famous adventurer who is Zula's stepfather. Arak, you are in the woods, not far from the road, aiming down the sights of a brand new longbow at a six-point buck, 150 feet away. <clears throat> it's been a while since you've had a fresh-caught meal. A cool breeze blows in from the south. It's looking good. Come on, come on, steady, steady. All right. And then I pull. Remember, your best bet is the heart just behind the shoulder at this angle. It's Oric, it's Zula's adventurer stepdad who has been traveling with you. I questioned it myself. I was like, <laughs> who is this? <laughs> just keep, there's a bit of south. There's, there's some wind from the all, south. All right, yeah. At Shh. this distance, just don't worry about you it. You need to be quiet. Just don't be nervous. You're going to scare it away. Yeah, go. You, you got this. <laughs> and I pull my bow back. For the greater good. Shoot. <laughs> 17 Your arrow strikes the deer Just where you're aiming right Behind the shoulder Direct hit Not bad, Eric, not bad Yeah, whatever, old man, thanks The deer is wheezing slightly And it whimpers a little as you approach And Oric sighs <sighs> Poor buddy was dead already See how skinny he is around the neck there? He's got some kind of plague Best to finish him off quick 
This is, this is like a contagious type, type of disease. Yeah. <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll, I'll do with the bow. So he fires one more arrow and the deer falls silent. Gods, I hope it's not too common in these woods. Oh, tainted meat, man. I, I really wanted it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Zula, you and baby Lula, that's uh, our working name for baby Graham Graham slash Working Lula. name. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Just gonna call you different things throughout this episode. Yeah. We'll figure it out in post. Uh, so you and baby Lula, who's still a clumsy walker, have headed into a small village for supplies. You head into a small central market with a fresh strawberries sign high above the door. You spot a gnome store clerk who looks up at you as you walk in and smiles and stares. Lula, go distract him. I'm going to steal some strawberries. (laughs) No. No, mister. She wanted to take strawberries, but I wanted to buy them. Yeah, I know. We're totally going to buy them. 100%. Strawberries. I'm like linking a lot, you know. (laughs) The gnome says, uh, sorry, little one. No strawberries today. Oh. The crop has been holding out on us lately. A few too many cold days and the town's worried we're going to lose entire fields if it keeps up. You should change your sign. (laughs) You're right. I lent my ladder to somebody and... You actually look familiar. Are you the half-orc from Urid City who did all the... What was it? The saving and the the fighting and... Oh my god, yeah. Keep going. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oh, it looks like your daughter's a little sad there. Uh, Lula, come here, come here. And I'm just gonna pick Lula up and be like, "Can you, can you just turn that sign around, please?" I don't feel so good. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up, turn it, turn okay. it. <laughs> she turns it around with her little hands. I'm gonna put her down. I'm gonna high five. She falls over onto her back. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Uh, good, good job, little turtle. Th- thank you, guardian. <laughs> Are you still on your back? Yeah. Okay, you could do it, Lula. Like, we She's practiced. She's, like, rocking. She's, I'm trying. I'm just really like, upset. You gotta use your, your core like we practiced. My tummy is hurting. <laughs> okay, I'll put her on her feet. <laughs> One more thing, adventurer hero lady. Do you happen to have any food for sale that you might have brought through? What? You're supposed to have the food. Right, right. No, I'm just asking, just asking. Are you hungry? Well, you know, it's just the town's a little worried. We're running short on supplies, and it's going to get colder soon, so... Oh, you might die. <laughs> well, we might, Lula. but if what? we do, we do, you know. All we can do now is just say a little prayer to Mother Nature. <laughs> <laughs> Silence. <laughs> <laughs> yep, have a great day. <laughs> Once I saw a dead fish... Oh. Yeah, it was uh, floating... <laughs> but it wasn't swimming. Oh wow, that's yeah. And and Zula told me that um it happens to everybody, so it's gonna happen to you too, <laughs> Lula. What? It's true. That's very sweet, little girl. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, across the astral plane, way up past the sky and beyond, through outer space. Whoa. And to the outer planes. That's far. Grulula, old Grulula, 300 year old Grulula, your spirit now dwells in Kabe, the heavenly wilderness plain of Eldaith. You speak with her now beside a bright glowing pool of water. Her voice is soft and comes to you in the breeze. Do you know what you must do, Grulula? What? <laughs> Can you speak up? Do you know? Oh, I think I do. Do you know who you wish to call for aid? Mm Mm-hmm. Say the names of your friends. I will bring them here. All right. I would like my Arak and my Zula to come (laughs) and hang out with me. The pool pulses with white light, and Eldaith speaks again, softer than ever. Do not be afraid, Gralu. Are you all right, Eldaith? I will be fine. You will succeed. It's a lot of confidence. <laughs> but I'll take it. <laughs> and with that, she's gone. But two large orbs of light begin to float up from beneath the surface of the sacred pool. You wade into the shallow water and call the orbs to you. 
and as the orbs approach, you lift them above the surface. The orbs disappear. Instead, you see Zula and Erak. Visions of serenity, water dripping from their faces as they wake, still mostly submerged. Guys, you two are coming up out of a pool of water, at the bottom of a circle of tall cliffs, all covered in deep green mosses and flowers. The bright sun casts a turtle-shaped shadow over you both. Hello, children. Oh, oh. Oh. What, what happened? You're dead. What? I'm just no. kidding, just oh. kidding. I called you up here, I'm dead, but you're not. I'm gonna take out my axe. <laughs> Prove to me you're Graham Graham. Um. <laughs> I've got a frying pan. <laughs> <laughs> it's her. Grab Grab holds out her frying pan. It's new. It's a new frying pan. Yes, Eldith made me a new one. Well, how is this possible? What are we doing here? I was brought here by Eldith when I died, and maybe you will be too if you become followers someday, but anyways. Gram Gram proceeds to tell you all about her new home. She explains that when she died, she left the material plane, where you guys are still alive and well, for Kabe. Kabe is basically heaven for followers of Eldith the nature goddess. It's hard to explain. It's more of a different plane of existence than the afterlife. Mm. In Kabe, there are three streams. The streams combine at a waterfall that fills the pool of light you woke in. This pool of light is the power source for Eldaith. She draws the energy that she uses to protect nature from its waters. Eldaith's in quite a bit of a pickle, you see. Um, something's gone wrong. The problem is that currently, the streams are still and stagnant, and the pool is drying up, quickly. When the pool dries, Eldaith will disappear. She's getting weaker by the day. In her millennia of existence, this has never happened before. Maybe they have something to do with that weird plague we've been seeing around. Lots of bad things are happening in nature right now. That plague stuff that we were witnessing and- I talked to someone in the in the town and they said that their crops are just not growing. It's not happening. Mm. She has asked her council of most loyal followers called the Eyes of Eldaith for help. This pool is getting very shallow and the Eyes of Eldaith are currently using our power to keep it from not disappearing completely, but I don't know how much longer we can hold up for. They elected Gram Gram as their youngest and most energetic member to find the source of the problem. She was allowed to use some of Eldaith's precious remaining power to bring two warriors from the material plane to help her on her mission. She chose you. What must we do? Well, I was thinking first we go to the source of the streams and figure out what is wrong. Since I've got my good friends here, why don't we start with the forest of friendship? I like that. Is that, that. funny? <laughs> <laughs> is that what it's called? That's one of the streams. Eldaith really loves alliteration. Okay. <laughs> I don't think a lot of thought went into that name, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> there was thought. Nice iterations. Um, okay, so the forest of friendship. I'll have you know there's more thought than you think right away, okay? You've heard the DM's feelings. No, 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 it's perfect. It's good. The waters of wetness. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> so you guys, it's going to take you about a day to reach the forest of friendship. As you start to walk, the sun dries your clothes. Every few steps, a creature seems to move past. There's a butterfly fluttering. A squirrel jumps, an Elmirage hops, or a Tressum flies overhead. It's okay if you don't know what those animals yeah, I are like, because... I was like, all right, <laughs> because Elmirage, they're, like, sure. Yep. Because they're magical, made-up creatures. <laughs> you say fairy, I understand that one. <laughs> <laughs> I heard butterfly. Yeah. Like oh, you guys that. know butterflies? <laughs> uh, the animals in these woods, they don't feel threatened by your presence. Some of them eye you with curiosity while others ignore you completely like the lounging dire wolf that you have to just walk around the back of to move past. That's scary. Oh, don't be scared. Eldaith has taken at least one of every creature and plant that has ever existed, and it's now up here in Kaube. It's actually quite beautiful. I like it here. Yeah, there's there's flowers you've never seen. There might be colors you've never seen in this place. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a psychedelic trip. I'm going to have to admit that I chose this path for another reason, and it's where my favorite tea grows. <laughs> oh, yeah? I just go and I pick over a couple of leaves and be like, don't tell Groggy, but he'd like this stuff better, too, if he's ever had it. <laughs> and she just stashes it away and keeps walking. 
So, Graham, Graham, uh, you, you, you thinking about staying here? What? I, I have no choice. Are you, are you sure about that, though? This isn't a real body. <laughs> this can't exist anywhere else. I mean, I mean, there, there, there's Lula's body, you know. She's her own person. She's a strong, independent, very young woman. She can't get up from her back. She just cries. She has no core. It's not abs. It's just moving back and forth <laughs> until you've moved enough. Oh, so I should tell her to use her arms. Arms and legs. Arms and legs. Okay. Tail I'll... too. So that's extra 10 squats a day. She's a <laughs> child. I hope you're taking good care of her. Who? Oh. Lula! <laughs> Where did you leave her? It's true. Her is. <laughs> well, she's she's with you, right? She's stranded in a <laughs> farmer's true. market or something. She's with a, a gnome inside a strawberry shop that has no strawberries. So, so she's fine. She's fine. Yes, she's yeah. fine. <laughs> All right. So as you guys are walking alongside the dried up stream, you hear ahead of you strange mechanical noises. It's very loud and far away. What is that awful sound? I've never heard that before. Is this an animal? Is it in peril? Should we save it? I've never heard anything like that. Let's move closer. (laughs) As you walk, Zula, you notice one of the trees looks just like Nelgork. Somehow, like, the way it's standing is a Nelgork pose, and he's got his face carved into the side. What the fuck? (laughs) Grandmother Willow style, Mm -hmm. you know? And Erak, as you walk, you see, like, a little Jin Jr. tree sprouting and <laughs> Graham Graham you know that this forest of friendship basically the trees take the shape of people of your, your, your life. life so it's a place to be around the people you love without actually being around the people that you love nice are we able to communicate with this you can talk to the tree if you want Eric go talk to the tree <laughs> <laughs> what the hell <laughs> this is so weird now watch your language up here oh I'm sorry uh, sorry Graham Graham and uh, I approach to the tree, or is it Jin, right? Jin the second. Jin the second. Jin That's what it was. Jin the second. Hey, Jin. Jin the second. <laughs> what are you doing here? Jin the second does not respond. Jin. <laughs> hey. Hey. Waving my hand in front of his face. Hello. Go ahead and make an insight check for me. Nine. Nine. Sad. Do you hear just a little rustle of leaves? Well, I guess it's just nothing. I just kind of give it like a light tap on the on the trunk of the tree, and I just, just kind of turn kick around. Jin? <laughs> well, just like like a light. Like, Somewhere in the material plane, he Jin's just like, falls oh, over. Like, like a voodoo doll. It's a voodoo <laughs> tree. <laughs> Why well, didn't kick it hard? Just kind of like a light, like, like a little, little quick tap. Graham, Graham, do you know what these trees are? They're my friends. <laughs> <laughs> They're not dead, are they? No. Now, what's so wrong with being dead? <laughs> And you also hear great sound effects. Thank you. <laughs> don't replace them. Yeah, please don't. What the hell is that? Pick up the pace, children. You guys see that the forest has been chopped down. You start to see just stumps, the bottom halves of some people that you recognize. Jesus Christ. <laughs> like whose whose feet? Who's who's the most memorable NPC butt that you guys have seen in, in your journey? Definitely butt? the ranger. Oh, D- no. Declan? Oh, Declan. <laughs> yeah, you definitely see Declan's chopped off shoes. right above the waist. <laughs> no! <laughs> Declan's shoes! No! Why? Graham, Graham, you know that the trees, they are a sacred part of this forest. The magic of the forest is that you can relive your memories in, in the moments of your life. And these people in the trees, they're not actually connected in any way to the souls on the material plane. You see that there is a flood here. The water level has risen, but is not running down the stream as it should be. And you still hear this sound from the distance, maybe a few hundred feet away. Someone's damming it up! (laughs) What's a dam? No, kidding. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what Zula know what a dam is. I mean, like, she has to. Yeah, dams are Being old. In nature? Yeah. I don't understand what kind of monster could have done this. Are there beavers up to no good up here? An area of the river has been dammed up by all of these trees, one of which looks just like your mom, Zula. Ugh. <laughs> Scattered throughout this area in water that's six inches to four or five feet deep 
are these trees, some of which are cut off halfway up, halfway submerged in the water. Towards the other end of this flood is this creature that's made of metal. It's got spikes sticking up from its gigantic shoulders. It stands on two legs and its two arms are these spinning saw blades. Once in a while just swings and an entire tree just falls down. You see it lift up one of these trees, stick into its spikes on its shoulders, and begin to walk back towards the dam. Oh, cool. Oh my, I've never seen <laughs> this kind of magic before. That creature's definitely not in peril. It's about to be. What page is it on? What's it called again? Well, I'm like adjusting the monster. Oh, okay. This is called the cadaver collector. But the monster that we are facing a is lumber called lumber collector. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a damn, a, a damn thing. A damn fool. A da- <laughs> <laughs> that's so stupid. Yeah, that seems good. I'm not saying it like the word "damn" is the bad word. It's making a damn. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Please don't think I would say. We that. call it a damn boy. Like damn boy. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Kendall. <laughs> no. Well. This has got to, and then she points to it and uses command and says, stop. Command, stop. All right, so the damn boy is uh, going to roll a wisdom saving throw. And yes, I will have all of you roll initiative. Wow. (laughs) We suck. (laughs) Welcome back, season two. He rolled a 16 on his saving throw. Oh, my God. So he did not stop. And you guys are now looking at this large metal creature, trees up on its shoulders, towering about 20 feet tall. Turn from the dam that he was heading towards, and it's charging at you full speed. And it lowers the tree that it just had from its shoulders, and when it reaches you, Graham Graham, it checks you with this tree. So all in total, I rolled a 27. Mm. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Sure did. So you're going to take 23 bludgeoning damage as this tree collides with your chest. Make a strength saving throw. Damn, that's a 21. You plant your feet and Gram Gram, you're facing down with this gigantic creature whose head is looming over you. And even as you look up at it, you see the saw blade spin. Not in my house. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Tilda. (laughs) Oh, Tilda, I know her. I cast my guardian of faith. Right behind him. This angel that is in the likeness of Tilda Swinton uh, appears behind <laughs> this thing. Where does she come from? Like another dimension? Like <laughs> yeah. Above that? Yeah, that's above the true. One? Can Tilda come here? Tilda is beyond all other Children, planes. your minds wow. just can't wrap around it. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Say hello to my spiritual friend. You're like, hello. Hi, Tilda. <laughs> She glitters and she's prepared to battle this metal creature. It, it's not all metal, is it? Like the there's like some skin exposed. Like, no, he's he's metal. You don't see anything that looks like skin on this creature. Jesus, I'm gonna try to go for its eyes with my commas. I want to leap off that log and try to hook it. Comma, 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 comma. Come on, dude. Some bullshit. So you jump up off of the log that's in its hands. You come down in it with your commas, and they both. <laughs> Reflect off of the metal. Are you step of the wind? Do a regular backflip off that motherfucker. Just you know, get away from this character. Okay, sure. You've backflipped out of reach. And I'm gonna go specifically for its saw blades. Okay, so you're swinging at the arms. Ooh, two hits. Ooh. So the, the bad news is your your axe is not magical, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> It's just cool. It's going to resist that damage. <laughs> so it's actually going to only take 10. Wow. Is it bloodied? It is. <laughs> yep. It's on its last bloody, legs here. So it's just <laughs> bleeding electricity. I like where your head is. Yeah. It, it yeah. almost didn't notice the axe swing into the arm twice. <laughs> it says, trees do not resist. And then it's going to pull out its saw blade and swing. Once at Gram Gram and once at Zula. 17 Gram Gram? Yep. 21 Zula? Of course. (laughs) So the saw blade extends out and swipes. Ooh, how many dice are you Dealing 14 slashing damage. Yikes. The blade chips a little bit off of Gram Gram's shell and into his shoulder and then slices through Zula's armor and into her chest arm. Oh, my chest arm. (laughs) Wood. Do not resist. Return to dam. 
block the river. And then... Tilda! Oh, yeah. So as soon as it moves, <laughs> the spiritual guardian Tilda Swinton is going to attack it. I rolled very low on my dexterity saving throw. 20 radiant damage on a failed save. Ooh. The radiant longsword of Tilda Swinton stabs through the thing's back. So it's now surrounded by everybody here. Mm -hmm. It is going to pick its log back up and start walking a few steps towards the dam. Yeah, I want an attack of opportunity yeah. for sure. Go ahead and make your swings against this big giant metal shell. Everybody tell me half of the damage you would oh, have dealt out. Half of the damage? Yeah, because it's resistant. Half of five? I don't remember. Do we round down or do we round up in this game? Uh, it's always the same. I don't know. Let's do up. We're, we've all decided up. I feel like it's up. <laughs> We're in heaven. Up. Okay, it's up. up. <laughs> so 13 damage. And it's bloody. It is not <laughs> bloody. <laughs> uh, as it reaches this edge, it's going to hurl the tree to just land on the dam. Its feet stay completely planted and its top half swivels to turn back to you and says, Wood, halt. Can we drown it? Like logs. You do minor illusion. Put a log in the water, and it's like log. And it just drowns. <laughs> like it's a... <laughs> It'll just hold its yeah. face down. Or like... I like all of these ideas. I'm gonna command it again. Cool. I'm gonna say swim. swim. Yeah. Let's get this hunk and piece of junk at the bottom sunken. of this sunk. Yes, sunken. Get it. Mm -hmm. That's better than what I was going to say. <laughs> I rolled a two on my wisdom save yes. for damn boy. He's going in the wawa. Time to swim. <laughs> yes, have fun, sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, and I could walk on liquids too, so I could just like. Yeah. I just walk across the water to get ready to witness this. The damn boy runs up the dam and cannonballs off of it <laughs> into the river on the other side. There is a very large splash. The water is great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed your swim, uh, everyone. Climb a tree. Uh-oh. <laughs> Could I just jump on top of one? I'm going to hop on a log on the edge of the river just to get out of the water myself. All right. And then I am going to cast Guiding Bolt, and I want to lightning bolt this water that it's in. Oh. Uh. <laughs> nice. Yes. But uh. it does not deal lightning damage, so it's not going to, like, Electrify do... it yeah. in the water? Why? Because it doesn't deal lightning. It's like a bolt of light. It's not a bolt of uh. lightning. Oh. What? The water. It's Does a it bolt of light. Water? It's not a <laughs> bolt of lightning. I'm sorry. I want it to be lightning. Lightning bolt would work. Get lightning bolt. I'm just going to guiding bolt it. It's not going to be as cool. <laughs> That's fine. Um, I rolled a 27. Okay, yeah. Easy hit. <laughs> so you're up on the edge of the river firing in this guiding bolt. It's just like a beam straight from the sky. It's like so holy and white. It's like the color of my skin. It's blinding. <laughs> and you guys just see the whole creature glow beneath the surface. The guiding bolt is going to grant you advantage for a whole round. That's 26 radiant damage. Wow. <laughs> you guys are what? Are you guys like level 10 or something? This yeah, is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Big spells, baby. All right. So up in the tree now, it is Arak's turn. And it's thing is just kind of flailing a little yeah, bit while the, while it the has stopped saying let's swim and has switched to saying ow <laughs> <laughs> like the water doesn't damage it like going in its gears or anything oh. um you can go ahead and make a perception check if you want to see if the water is affecting it oh god it was a net one. Oh. Ooh. Five. You're like, wait, where is it? It's because it was so bright that I was just like, oh. <laughs> so I guess I leap into that white light. Sure. Just try to attack them in the water. Glad you found trees. Good job. <laughs> yeah. So you're lucky enough to land perfectly so that none of these spikes dab up through your feet. Oh, shit. It's like one's like right here in my groin area. Like, whoa. <laughs> that was close. So I jump onto the back of this damn boy and take my hands and using my... Key powered strikes, I guess. Wait, they're not even key powered. They're just magical. Monk attacks are magical for a you. Magical now. hands. Magic hands. Hit, hit him with the monos <laughs> right in the neckos. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and roll for the karate chop. One of your hands slices right through a piece of metal and into this thing's skull. Oh, felt that one. I used flurry of blows right at that spot just to open up the wound even more. Ooh. Just a quick magical monk fist. Its whole body jerks forward from this impact. Arak is dipped beneath the surface of the river and then it comes back up. One of its eyes is linked out and I mean, there's bloodied. a big old hole in its head. It is bloodied at this point. Nice. I would like to actually grab a tree 
from the dam. Mm -hmm. You know when those like SWAT people come in and they're like, open your door. They All go, the time, Bam. every weekend. I'm going to treat him like a door. <laughs> how heavy are these trees? I don't know. Well, how big are they? I'm level 10 strength <laughs> right now. So. They're level 10 heavy. <laughs> go ahead and make an attack roll with this uh, battering ram tree that you're going to use. Ooh, ooh. Well, do I add anything to it now? Yeah, you'll add your strength modifier at least. Okay, 21. I don't think you're proficient in tree, though. No. <laughs> you're definitely going to strike him. Would you consider this a two-handed melee <laughs> weapon? Yes. Oh, I get to re-roll my ones and twos. Oh, Ooh. look at that. Okay, so 13 damage from this big log. I'm going to have it fall over deeper into the water. A am I able to get jump up? I'm actually going to have you make a dexterity saving throw because there are these like spikes on this thing's back all around you. Mm -hmm. Is good enough. A few of these spikes right at your back carry you down beneath the waves for now. So he has been knocked over by a big old tree. He's got a hole punch into his head and he's now deep beneath the waves. Eric, you are attached to his back. I'm gonna have both of you take some electricity damage as this hole in its head is going to surge beneath the waves like right in front of you. So each of you take 11 lightning damage, but it is going to start to climb its way out of the river with Arak just clinging onto its back. Die, wood, die. Oh my God. How bad are my friends looking? I'm okay. I'm too okay. I too okay. am okay. You have 2,000. <laughs> Fuck it. And I want to use my shell defense, but I want to like run at him and then use it. I want to sweep the leg as okay. I like draw into my shell. Like, you want to Koopa shell him? Over. What? Yeah! But you want to like Mario shell yeah, him? Yeah, hell yeah! <laughs> just like start bouncing back and forth. You just start oh spinning. Bing. This is a master turtle technique that you learned. <laughs> you do the yeah. red shell, red shell. When you I have, ascended. I have no idea how to make this an attack though. I'll have you make... Dude, she could skip across the water, right? Like a... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she gets the speed. Yeah. Graham Graham running start hops into her shell and is going to slide at this thing. I'll have you make just a an unarmed strike at it. Okay. Go ahead and make an attack roll. 14's not gonna be enough Oof. to hit it. But you do manage to slide your way as a little turtle shell and bump into its shins, which oh. is the goal. This is not the goal, man. <laughs> but now I'm pretty much like You're I just can't a big old it. piece of armor. Big old shell. Eric, you are on top of this thing. Gram Gram is in shell form right beneath it. Zula's to the side getting hit by it. Well, I'm planted on there. I'll probably just use one fist and one elbow on that same spot and just, just try to take him down. Just keep going just at its head then. Gah. Make your attack rolls. Finally, the eye that was attached to that side of the head shoots Gah. out the front of it and bounces off of Gram Gram's shell. Doop. A souvenir. I'm gonna like get get off of it, get away from it. You gonna let it swing at you on your way out? Step of the wind, no. No, I will not. Okay. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. You burn another key point and it tries to rotate and swing its saw hand at you, but it misses. I kind of want to come at it at an angle. All right. Or I can like grab onto its arm and then like the momentum slash, I'm hoping I'm heavy enough, brings his arm towards himself. Ah. Uh -huh. So you want to saw him. With his own saw arm. I like it. It's like The Incredibles. Yeah! <laughs> exactly what I was thinking. I kind of, I got the vibe, yeah. You're gonna have to try and get it to swing at you. Can it be intimidated? <laughs> <laughs> sure, try to intimidate it in attacking you, go for it. It's I'm gonna perfect. just turn around and just like wiggle my butt at it. <laughs> Stop that, Wood. Come hit me. Come hit me. Stay still. First is going to try and kick Gram Gram Shell, which will transform it into a, a Koopa and it will fly around and hit <laughs> yes. each of the trees. Like, it's like a pinball machine. And, machine. and that's an instant kill. It'll, it'll hit Arak. Instant kill. <laughs> oh, no. No way. I rolled a, a 22 oh to my hit. God. Jesus Christ. I know. It hits because I'm 21 <laughs> right now. Oh, my God. Really? Oh, oh really? no. I'm so surprised. <laughs> I'm sorry that I hit you for He's not sorry. 12 bludgeoning damage. Uh. Gram Gram really does go flying around spinning <laughs> into a couple of trees like a pinball. And then it's going to swing its good blade at Zula. Now you've prepared your action, so Let's go. we're gonna have a roll off. Here. Oh my gosh. Whoa. Roll off. Let roll me see if I have anything off. To We're gonna help roll me. for it. Let's do it. Here we go. <laughs> no. 
It's not great. What did I roll? <laughs> you got an 18. Oh. And I got a three and a four. Oh. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> That's too bad. I she really wanted that to be the ending. That, that would have been very that climactic. Would have been sick, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're gonna take some damage. Oh my god! Because that's... you basically thrust your way into the path of this to try and do this. I really did. <laughs> you jump right in the way, and you prepare to turn this guy's crazy arm onto himself. But instead, it's going to slice right into your gut, straight in, for 25 slashing damage. <laughs> It's going so to good. lift you above its head and throw you onto the dam with the rest of the wood. I'm just going to lay there in defeat. Suck it, tree. <laughs> I am going to use my bonus action to pop out of my shell. I'll go, boo, and then I'm going to shoot guiding bolts on it again. I'll just uh, run up to the back of him, take my magical fist, and just ram, just right in the back, lower back. Fist fighting a robot. Zula, you are on your back, bleeding over all this wood in the dam. I want to cry, first of all. <laughs> you use your bonus action, action to cry. I'm actually going to attack it three times Whoa. because I'm going to surge straight revenge. I just want to go for the back of its little arms. Yeah! Does the arm fall off? The arm breaks on your first swing, and you swing again, and it slices it right off at the shoulder. Is it still spinning? <laughs> the saw is continuing to spin. Oh, you know what? I'll just pick up the arm. Okay. I'll slice its stomach open. Ah. <laughs> so you pick up the arm with your yeah. final swings, and you slash into its damn boy belly. I want just like little sparks sparking on my face if it's its flashes of blood. You know what I mean? <laughs> or like oil. A little yeah, bit of oil. I just want oil all over my face right okay, now. Okay, there's oil everywhere. It leaks into the water. The wildlife is ruined. Um, <laughs> Zula is now standing over this smoking thing, and she's got this saw in her hand. <laughs> comes to a stop as the robot has a few last spasms and then dies. Perfect. <laughs> You guys are now here in this forest with this dam and this uh, dead dam boy. Well, children, I didn't know I could get hurt when I'm dead, but here I am wondering <laughs> what happens if I die when I'm dead. I don't want to know. We'll find out later. It's like in heaven. <laughs> so as you guys are recuperating in this flooded area, you see that some of the trees, you didn't see them move, but they've gotten closer. <laughs> They're taking up the spots of the ones who were chopped down and surrounding this area around the dam. We should clear this dam. Get this water flowing through here. Go on, strong friends. <laughs> Good job. Go, go. Let Graham Graham take a breather. Uh, my guts are hanging out no, of my No, you stomach. said you were fine. <laughs> Could I grab like this robot's arm saw arm and just like oh, use it to like sure, yeah. clear yeah. the dam a little you, bit? You fire the thing up, yeah. pull it. <laughs> <laughs> Mechanism, you can Hello, yeah, new so weapon. This thing is like a, a tendon that I pull or something. This thing like is that. a two D twelve slashing. That's terrifying. <laughs> you chop through the dam. It doesn't take too long before the water starts pouring down the side of the stream, all the way down towards the source. Yeah. Well, how in the world did that get here? That's a rhetorical question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just as confused as you are. I don't even know what it was. What about the other streams? Oh, my. <laughs> I'm so tired. Maybe we'll find an answer to that question. Well, you guys do have time to take a rest. Oh my yes, God. get my spell slots back. I'm doing it right now. You guys go to sleep in the friendship forest. Uh, oh. The stars are beautiful. Oh. Sleep under Grocky's tree. The moon tree. is high. Yeah. You sleep under Grocky's tree. A knot in the center of it opens up, and inside is a small wooden ship. And as you pick it up in Elvish, on the side of it, it says, Friendship. Now that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> and using this item, you guys can actually send it across the plains wherever you want. You throw it like a paper airplane. You're going to say somebody's name, and that ship is going to go pick up that person and bring them right to you and drop them off so they can aid you in battle or whatever you need at the time. But it only works on one person. So once you use it the first time, you're going to choose the person that's going to appear, and then that friendship will always work with that same person. Wow! 
Oh. Now I have a question. Could we pretend that pirate ships are like airplanes in the night sky, <laughs> like shooting stars? <laughs> I could really use a friendship right now. Right now. <laughs> 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 we will find out what happens next in um, the next episode um, of Tour Recall. For it. I'm gonna carve B O B on the side of that ship. What? Well, bring your own. <laughs> Bonnet. <laughs> Zula, Eric, and Gram Gram, you guys seem to be a third of the way done. What are you thinking next? Ridge of Reflection, Peak of Peace? What? <gasps> I like Peak of Peace. That sounds peaceful. I don't think we're going to find that there. Friendship <laughs> Force was not friendly. Um, <laughs> Friendship Force I think it's going to be opposite. <laughs> it's going to be quite the opposite. Let's go with the peak. All right. Peak it is, you guys. <laughs> How are your characters feeling? Once again, worried about dying in the afterlife <laughs> that was rough on gram gram for sure yeah. don't get it <laughs> don't want to know uh, my character's feeling good i'm a little confused as to these odd names that these places are called and what this whole purpose of why we're here they're you pretty know, self-explanatory but, but they yeah. both start with f you know forest of friendship yeah <laughs> but uh it's it's dangerous out there but i am curious to see see what happens on this next one uh, Zula feels great. She loves the OG gang back together. You saying you don't like Baby G? Yeah, I think <laughs> <laughs> I think Gram Gram. I expect it. No, yeah. <laughs> She's great. She just needs like a couple years of training, you know. And Gram yeah. Gram only needed the like maybe not even the first mission, and she was great <laughs> already. So how to train your turtle? She's not mm -hmm. a try. <laughs> potty training. <laughs> she, yeah, Gram Gram is potty trained, and little Lula is still, you know, just. She's having some action. You know, yeah. yeah. She's fertilizing the world here right now. In yeah, the bed, she's... crying and falling over. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You always ask us how we're feeling, but how are you feeling? Oh, uh, that's I, the real question. I feel great. I'm excited to see how you guys do and uh, how you use your new friendship item <laughs> in the future. You've unlocked the power of friendship. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening to this bonus episode of Roll For It. I hope you had a good time watching some Saw stuff happen. You watched it. Yeah. In your mind's eye. In your mind's eye. All right. Peace, everybody. <laughs>